Hi friends, today we will see about managing intercostal drainage and as a nurse what to do with that. My objective is in this presentation to discuss about anatomy and physiology of the chest relating to the chest drainage, mechanics of breathing, conditions required to rural chest drainage, chest drain basics, three bottle system and nursing care. Let's see about thoracic cavity. This space is defined by sternum anterior. This is we can see here sternum and thoracic vertebrae posterior and ribs is coming in the lateral and diaphragm it is in the base here. Chest wall composed of ribs, sternum, thoracic vertebrae interlaced with intercostal muscles. The diaphragm is called is floor of the thoracic cavity. It's the floor of thoracic cavity. What is thoracic cavity? It consists lungs, right and left, media sternum, it consists uh, heart, iota and great blood vessels, esophagus, trachea and thymus. Let's see the mechanics of breathing. During inspiration, the brain signals the phrenic nerve. The phrenic nerve stimulates the diaphragm muscles to contract. When the diaphragm muscle contract, it moves down. It when it will move down, the making the thoracic it will make the thoracic cavity larger. Keep this in mind to when we will discuss in the physics, it will be more clear. How does the air move into the lungs? Let's see the physics. If you understand the principles of gas flow, you will understand the chest drainage more. As pressure changes, air moves. Physics of gases, Boyle's law. When the volume of a container increases, the pressure decreases. When the volume of a container decreases, the pressure increases. For example, imagine we are bring 10 people in a small car and the same other way just bring this 10 people in a, in a big bus so imagine the pressure if inside the car 10 people are sitting around the pressure inside the car will be more at the same time this 10 people are sitting inside the bus in a larger bus the, so the area inside the bus will be more so imagine the pressure the pressure inside the bus will be less compared with the car the same way when the volume of the container increases imagine the bus the pressure decreases okay when the volume of a container decreases imagine the car the volume will be less compared with the bus okay so if the volume of a container decreases, the pressure increases. So if the 10 people are sitting inside the small car, the pressure inside the car will be more like that. So when the diaphragm, what will happen in breathing? The same way. Breathing, when the diaphragm contracts, it moves down. As we discussed before, it will make the, uh, the volume of thoracic cavity high the volume increases the pressure inside decreases air moves from an area of higher pressure the atmosphere to an area of lower pressure the lungs the pressure within the lungs called intrapulmonary pressure so let's see here while inspiration the diaphragm here it will move down so that the volume inside the thoracic cavity will be more so uh, as we discuss about the car and bus if there is larger volume inside the pressure will be less so compared with the atmospheric pressure outside here the pressure inside the lungs will be low usually the air moves from the higher pressure to the lower pressure so what will happen in the inspiration? The thoracic volume will be high, so the pressure inside the lungs will be low. So the 
air from atmosphere will move to the lungs. This is called as inspiration. So let's see exhalation. Exhalation occurs when the phrenic nerve stimulus stops the diaphragm relaxes and it moves up. This reduces the volume of the thoracic cavity. When the volume decreases, intrapulmonary pressure increases. The air flows out of the lungs. So here, if exhalation, the free the phrenic nerve stimulus will stop. So the diaphragm will move up. The, while moving up, the thoracic volume will be less. If the volume less uh, decreases, the pressure inside the lungs will be high compared with the atmosphere. So usually the air will move from the higher pressure to the lower pressure. So the air from in the higher pressure inside the lungs, the air will be moving out of the lungs. Okay. This now we will discuss about pleural anatomy. Lungs are surrounded by thin tissue called as, called the pleura, a continuous membrane that folds out itself. We have two types: parietal pleura and visceral pleura. Parietal pleura is lines the chest wall. And the visceral pleura, otherwise known as uh, pulmonary pleura, it covers the lungs. Okay, see the diagram here. This is chest wall. Near to the chest wall, it is parietal pleura. And near to the lung, is pulmonary pleura. The gap between the parietal and the visceral pleura is called as uh, pleural cavity. And it is filled with the pleural fluid. The function of the pleural fluid is to avoid friction during breathing to protect the lungs from the friction and if there is any fluid or air stuck in this pleural cavity we need to get it out it will compromise the breathing and it will be very uh, dangerous for the patient let's see uh, conditions requiring chest drainage first one is pneumothorax the air between the pleural area see here the diagram this is this area is this is the collapsed lungs and the parietal and visceral pleura is a cavity between and it is filled with uh, air and blood in the pleural space is called uh, hemothorax you can see here a collapsed lung and the blood in between the lung uh, the pleural cavity and the transudate or exudate in the pleural space is called Pleural effusion. See, this is again the collapsed lung, and the area uh, of pleural cavity is filled with the transudate. Usually, the transudate is uh, from coming from uh, infections like uh, TB or uh, pneumonia, and the hemothorax it's from the trauma, it's for like uh, RTE or fall from height or something, external trauma or uh, from the surgical interventions like uh, uh, thoracic surgeries or uh, cardiac surgery and pneumothorax is from uh, a hole inside the lung like bulle or from stab wound so the air is coming out I mean coming from out to the lung and the bulle or hole inside the lung the, so the air will go out to the pleural cavity from the lung and uh, we'll see treatment of pleural conditions the first one remove fluid and air as promptly as possible the second prevent drained air and fluid from returning to the pleural space the third restore the negative pressure in the pleural space to re-expand the lung these are the aims of treatment and see here how do we do that remove fluid and air thoracostomy creates an opening in the chest wall through which a chest tube also called thoracic catheter is placed which allows the air and fluid to flow out of the chest this is how do we insert the chest tube the surgeon will place the patient in a comfortable position and uh, keep the hand uh, behind the head from the affected side. So the surgeon will prepare the area with the biodin and the septic solution and uh, see 
exploring the incision with the finger and place the tube with the clamp and suture the tube with the chest wall.